Praise the Lord. Beloved, welcome and thank you for joining me once again to listen to the Word of God, which are solutions to all our problems. I trust that you are well. So, beloved, today we are continuing the studies on the book of Kings and we are studying 1 Kings chapter 9. In the previous study, we learned from 1 Kings chapter 8 that King Solomon brought the ark of God into the newly built temple. He then dedicated the temple of God to God and he offered 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats as sacrifices to God. And after dedicating the temple and making the sacrifices, King Solomon prayed to God that if anyone comes to the temple and pray, whether they are foreigners or they are Israelites, God should hear them from his home in heaven and grant them their wish. And in response to Solomon's sacrifices and prayer, in today's study, 1 Kings chapter 9 says that after Solomon built the temple and his own royal palace, God appeared to him just like he appeared to him before at Gibeon. The Lord said to Solomon, I have heard your prayer and petition before me. I have set this temple you have built aside to be holy by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked with a heart of integrity and uprightness, doing all I have commanded you, and if you keep my commands, then I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. As I promised your father David when I said, you will never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. Beloved, what a great privilege it was for Solomon to hear the voice of God directly and not through a prophet. We would all be more than glad to hear God speak to us. And so imagine Solomon's joy hearing the voice of God. But this is not the first time Solomon heard from God. The first time he heard God speaking to him was in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. Each of the times God has spoken to Solomon was after Solomon had made sacrifices to God. When you give up something that you treasure or value for God's sake, be assured that God takes notice of it. Whether it's your time, money, or strength, or even kind spoken words, beloved, know that you will be rewarded because you did it in God's name. Matthew chapter 6 verse 21 says that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Since your heart is in your treasure, when you give anything to anyone in God's name, God receives your gifts along with your heart. He takes both your heart and your gifts and takes care of the needs of your own heart. And who best is it to take care of the needs of the heart than the one who made the heart and knows all that is in it? So, beloved, allow God to have the first place in your life and seek to please Him by spending quality time with Him through studying His Word. And He will take care of your every need protect you, watch over you, and keep you safe from all harm. So the first lesson we learn from 1 Kings chapter 9 is that when you give to God the things that you value and treasure, God will honor you and also take care of all your needs. 
So after God spoke to Solomon and promised him that he would dwell in the temple he built for him and would also make his descendants to be the kings of Israel, in 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 6, God also said to Solomon that if he and his descendants fail to worship him and they turn away from him and worship other gods, he would take the promised land, which is the land of Israel, away from them. Israel will become a subject of ridicule among the nations, and the temple Solomon built for God will be destroyed. Beloved, this warning of God to Solomon seemed very harsh, but God loved Solomon dearly and wanted to see Solomon finish well, just like his father, King David, did. So what God is saying is that if Solomon and his descendants devote themselves to him and they obey his commands, his blessings for them will never end. But if they fail to obey his commands and worship other gods, he would take the land of Israel away from them and reject the temple. Beloved, today God has given us the same promise that if we walk in his ways and devote ourselves to him, we will always walk in blessings. But if we reject him and his word, his covering and his blessing will no longer be upon us. James, the apostle of Jesus Christ, says it in James chapter 4 verse 8 that draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Beloved, God loves you and wants to bless you by providing all your needs. But because sin separates us from God, you cannot receive God's blessings and rewards if you continue to live in sin. So, beloved, repent, turn from your sins and draw near to God so that he will also draw near to you. When God draws near to you, he comes with the fullness of his power to protect you from all harm, to provide all your needs, and to give you peace and rest. Beloved, what more could you ask for if the God of heaven's army is with you? Your life will be more than complete if the Lord God Almighty is with you. So do not wait for any trouble to come into your life before you draw near to God. Beloved, draw near to God with a repentant heart now. Repent of all your sins and let God draw near to you and protect you with the shadow of his wings where no evil thing or person can snatch you from. So the second lesson we learn in today's study is to be faithful to God by obeying his commandments so that all his promises of blessings will be released into your life. So after God gave Solomon the conditional promise that all will go well with him and his descendants if he remains faithful, in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 25, the Bible says that three times in a year, King Solomon offered sacrifices to God on the altar he built for the Lord. Beloved, when it came to offering sacrifices for the Lord, King Solomon was generous and this showed how much he loved and appreciated God. And after each sacrifice Solomon made to God, God spoke to him and blessed him. King Solomon himself wrote it in the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22, that the blessings of the Lord makes a man rich and God does not add any sorrow to it. The evidence of God's blessing on Solomon's life 
was how wealthy Solomon was. And the last verse in 1 Kings chapter 9 says that Solomon had ships that imported large quantities of gold to Israel every year. And in 1 Kings chapter 10, we learn also that even foreigners brought large amounts of gold, spices, and other precious stones as gifts to King Solomon. All these blessings of prosperity in Solomon's life is in response to how generous he gave his resources to God. Beloved, the Bible says it in Luke chapter 6 verse 38 that give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Beloved, everything you do for God does not go unseen. But because of Jesus' ultimate sacrifice on the cross, we are no longer required to sacrifice animals. But the sacrifice that God expects from us now is to use our wealth to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, to help the poor and the needy, to help the orphans and widows, and to also support those who preach the word of God. This is the sacrifice God expects from us. And when you use your wealth and your riches to help people, God will honor his promise in Luke chapter 6 verse 38. And like he did for King Solomon, God will command riches and wealth from every angle to come to you. So the third lesson we learned from today's study, 1 Kings chapter 9, is that when you give generously out of your wealth to help the poor or the needy, God will also bless you abundantly and you will provide for all your needs. So beloved, this brings us to the end of today's study. I trust that you have been blessed by the word of God. King Solomon started well, but will he end well? Join me in our next lesson and let us find out. So beloved, until we meet again next time, stay blessed.